गुड मॉर्निंग माई डेस्ट स्टूडेंट्स गुड मॉर्निंग टूडे अवर टॉपिक इज गोइंग गोइंग टू बी इको सिस्टम वॉट डू यू मीन बाई इको सिस्टम इको सिस्टम इज एनवरमेंटल कंडीशन इट इज एन एनवरमेंटल फीचर सो इन एन एनवरमेंट what are the different components living what are the different abiotic structures occupying these are all the interesting areas that we are going to discuss under the topic ecosystem okay now in ecosystem there are two areas structure and functions and then you have got what is known as a uh, uh, hydrosphere zero sphere etc now so i am going to divide this into two lectures the first one is the ecosystem structure and function <clears throat> okay now what is the structure and function of an ecosystem an ecosystem can be visualized as a functional unit of nature where living organisms interact among themselves that's more important where the living organisms interact among themselves that is biotic biotic and also with the surrounding physical environment that is a biotic a biotic so what is their biotic relationship and what is their abiotic relationship with a particular community or with a particular plant is what is called as ecosystem the structure of the ecosystem now a ecosystem varies greatly in size from a small pond to a large forest or a sea yesterday itself in one of my lectures i have told you that an ecosystem <clears throat> the colony could be very small see for example even a bacteria living in a petri dish it is a forming an ecosystem it is a forming an ecosystem and some of the bacteria are there e coli bacteria and the different bacteria colonizing your gut they it it forms an ecosystem so the ecosystem could be very very small extremely smaller even the pond that i have represented put is a large even very micro ecosystems are there so it could be as small as a pond and as large as a forest or sea see the next point the whole earth is considered to be a composite ecosystem okay many ecologists they regard the entire biosphere as a global ecosystem as a composite of all local ecosystems on earth so all the local ecosystems are put together all the local ecosystems are put together it is forming the global ecosystem so the world whole earth is also sometimes called as an ecosystem so what do you we understand from this slide ecosystem mainly we are going to concentrate on the biological relation biotic relationship and the abiotic relationship of a particular uh, plant or an animal with rest of us there are three basic ecosystems namely terrestrial ecosystem aquatic ecosystem and man made ecosystem <clears throat> now forest grassland and deserts these are all some of the some of the good examples of the terrestrial ecosystems that which are on the land pond lake wetland river and estuary these are all some of the examples of aquatic ecosystem 
then you have got what is known as a man-made ecosystem crop fields and an aquarium these are all some of the man-made ecosystems so so many ecosystems are there forest grassland desert pond lake wetland river estuary crop fields aquarium etc etc of these different ecosystems in my study in my today's class i am going to concentrate more on a pond ecosystem see the ecosystem has got a fundamental characteristic feature it could be any ecosystem the fundamentality will never change see there will be what is known as a producer and there will be what is known as a first level consumer second level consumer third level consumer and then decomposers so all these are the different components of a ecosystem without a producer the consumers cannot depend on the producers so these are this is a general components of an ecosystem but only there will be a slight variation from one to another for example in a grassland ecosystem the grasses will be the producers in a crop field ecosystem a paddy wheat sugarcane maize they will be the producers okay and in a forest ecosystem the forest trees are the producers so the producers will be going on changing from one type of ecosystem to another ecosystem similarly the consumer will also change for example in a pond ecosystem from in small insects which are depending on the producers they become the primary consumers and in a crop field rats birds this this will be the primary consumers they come and then they take the grains and then they fly away so the birds will be the primary consumers in a crop field okay so the uh, primary consumer the components will be changing from one ecosystem to another ecosystem but as i told you the fundamentality will not change <clears throat> there will be a producer there will be a consumer there will be a decomposer that consumer will be the consumer of a first order consumer of a second order consumer of a third order it all changes okay so in some ecosystem only one consumer may be there we don't know but in some other consumer it will be uh, it will be having more consumers also it all depending on the type of the ecosystem so now it is a uh, uh, very difficult to discuss all the type of ecosystems so very difficult as i have just now told you here 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 ten ecosystems are there i can't discuss all these ecosystems so as an example i am going to take up a pond ecosystem but what all i am telling for your pond ecosystem that a knowledge you can apply for other ecosystems but only the components of the ecosystem will be changing as i was telling you in a pond ecosystem algae will be the producers small submerged plants will be the producers whereas the producers will change from one ecosystem to another ecosystem but it is mostly always a plant only okay so we will take a pond ecosystem as a typical example and then we will follow our discussion identification and enumeration of a plant and animal species of an ecosystem gives its species composition vertical distribution of a different species occupying different levels is called as stratification stratification for example trees occupy the top vertical strata in a forest and <coughs> shrubs they form the second strata the third strata will be occupied by the herbs so in a forest ecosystem there will be different three levels see the all the trees will be of a particular height so they will be forming a particular height 
and then below that uh, shrubs will be there. This will be the height of the shrubs growing there, and the herbs will be at the lower level. So they form clear cut uh, three strata. The components of the ecosystem function as a unit when you consider the following aspects. As I was telling you, there will be a producer productivity and there will be a decomposer. There will be an energy flow from one level to another level. And then there will be what is known as a nutrient cycle will be there. There will be a nitrogen cycle, phosphorus cycle, carbon cycle, everything will be there. All the components will be in a cyclic form. One thing you have to understand in nature, a beautiful it was said by a chemist, nothing is destructible. Okay, you can only change the energy from one to another. Okay, you got, see for example, when a fan is running in a room, you are converting the electrical energy into a mechanical energy. In a dynamo, you are converting a, um, the, the, the mechanical energy into the electrical energy. In a battery, you are converting your chemical energy into an electrical energy. This is also very clearly stated. See, nothing is destructible in the world. You, are, you can only go on changing the form and shape. Similarly, <clears throat> see the amount of nitrogen, the amount of carbon, the amount of phosphorus, or all the things which are present in the nature, we, you cannot destroy it. We think that we are destroying and we are creating. No, 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 no. It's not at all possible. You don't create anything and you don't destroy anything. Okay. So you just change the shape. We are only changing the shape. Similarly, the nitrogen which is present in the soil, it is taking a different shape. Finally, it is reduced to the original structure. So different type of a cycle you are getting in the ecosystem. As I was telling you, the phosphorus cycle, carbon cycle, nitrogen cycle, etc. There will be an energy flow from one level to the another level. And when the energy is flowing from one level to the another level, there will be what is called as a dissipation of energy. There will be an energy loss. Okay. So all these things we are going to discuss in our detail way in the slides which are going to follow us. Fine. So, as I was just now telling you, I am going to take a pond ecosystem as a typical example of the other ecosystems and then what all the general truth I am telling about the pond ecosystem, you have to apply for the other ecosystems also. A pond is a shallow water body in which all the above mentioned four basic components of an ecosystem are well exhibited. So, the abiotic component is the water with all the dissolved inorganic and organic substances and <clears throat> the rich soil deposit at the bottom of the pond. The solar input, the temperature, day length and other climatic conditions regulate the rate of function of the entire pond. Very beautifully stated. See, the abiotic component namely the water. So, it has got all the organic, inorganic and organic substances dissolved in that. Okay. And then, for a soil deposit is there, decomposes. They contain a lot of uh, bacteria, fungi, etc. And they will be doing the function of a decomposition. Okay. And then all the energy of that pond that you are getting is from the sun only, the solar input. And what are all controlling the ecosystem? The temperature, the, the duration of the sunlight and other climatic conditions. So these are three factors namely the temperature, duration of the sunlight and then the climatic condition. These are three factors designed and determine or regulate the rate of functioning of the pond. Okay. <clears throat> now, the autotrophic in, um, components include the phytoplanktons. 
What is mean by phytoplankton? Small um, plants which are floating. So plankton means a float. So I've got a phytoplankton and a zooplankton. Okay. So autotrophic components will be only phytoplankton. So autotrophic means what? That which are able to prepare their own food material. So even though you are in a pond, you have got your phytoplankton and a zooplankton. The producer will be only a phytoplankton. The zooplankton will be the consumer. Okay. So the phytoplankton, a small plant which are floating on the pond, some algae, <coughs> and the floating submerged plants, marginal plants. These are are seen at the edges of the pond. They are all autotrophic components, or in other words, they are called as the producers. So, in a pond ecosystem, what are all the components? Phytoplankton, algae, floating and submerged and marginal plants. These are all the producers. Okay? Fine. That's all. Next, we are coming to the consumers. So, which are all the consumers in a pond? The consumers are represented by the zooplankton, zooplankton, and then free swimming and bottom dwellers free swimming and bottom dwellers so these are the mainly three components of a pond ecosystem as a first uh, as a consumer so producer first consumer second then you, know, you go to the decomposers the decomposers are the fungi Bacteria and flagellates, which are especially at the bottom of the pond, abundant flagellates, which are at the bottom of the pond. So they become the decomposers. So decomposer is the third component in a pond ecosystem. This system performs all the functions of any ecosystem and of the biosphere as a whole. So these are three structures, namely producers, consumers, and decomposers, along with the solar light, sunlight, and the other you know, related factors, namely temperature, etc., etc. They are responsible for the smooth functioning of an ecosystem. Okay. So, what are the different functions which are taking place in an ecosystem? First, conversion, <coughs> conversion of inorganic into organic material. So, conversion of inorganic to organic material is done by the radiant energy of the sun. So, sun is responsible for the conversion of inorganic into organic substances and it is done by the autotrophs, producers. Then, second one is consumption. Consumption is done by the natural troughs. Then, decomposition of a mineral or under mineralization, it is done by the autotrophs and the dead, dead matters. Then these events are repeat, repeated over and over again. So the conversion of the inorganic into organic and then the consumption of the materials produced by the autotrophs by means of what's called heterotrophs and then decomposition by the bacteria and other organisms. These events they are repeated over and again. There is this is there is a unidirectional movement of energy towards the higher trophic levels and its dissipation and a loss as a heat to the environment. See, this is a beautiful uh, <coughs> a slide showing how a pond ecosystem is constructed. See, this is the pond, and then you get the first primary producers. Now these are primary, primary carnivores, carnivores. 
So the, these are the primary producers, which are at the bank of the area. And of course, we'll be having some algae also. Lots of algae will be there, biophilogenics will be there, then spirodera. So many primary producers will be there in a new product. And all the animals which are depending on the producers, they are the they are divided into consumers. But once again, the consumers are divided into zoo planktons, primary carnivores, secondary carnivores, herbivores. These are all the consumers. So many so consumer will be so herbivores. There will be herbivores. There will be primary carnivores, secondary carnivores, zoo planktons. These are all grouped under what is called as a consumer. Then you will be having the decomposer. decomposer. Sun is the, it is with the help of this sun, solar radiation, the whole process is taking place. So with the help of the sun, the producers are able to produce the energy. As I was discussing, it is converting the inorganic into the organic substances. That is what is called as the production. That is once again consumed by the consumers. All these organisms, they die and then they sink to the bottom of the pond. Whether it is a producer, a consumer, whatever it is, then finally they are decomposed by the decomposers or the saprophytes or the saprotrophs. See another beautiful slide of a pond ecosystem. Very beautifully constructed. See how your pond ecosystem is there. See these are all the producers. These are all the producers. The plant valley, this is called the valicinaria. And these are all some valicinaria, young one of valicinaria. This is a plant is called a sagittus. Some more grasses are there in the bank of the river. So these are all the producers. Then you have got the mosquitoes. Pond is scatter. Then water lily. So this water lily. And then you have got what is known as uh, uh, beetles, newts, then pond snail, we'll be getting the frogs also most of the time, then tadpoles, leech, duck, these are all the different components, uh, including the dragonfly. So they will be all living in the water, they will be all living in the water along with the producers. So, and then all these things, all, all these living organisms, one day or other they die and then finally they go, uh, sink to the bottom and then they are finally decomposed. Why they decompose this? Now you are going to study one after productivity, consumer level, etc. First you are going to productivity. A yeah, constant input of solar energy is the basic requirement for any ecosystem to function and sustain. So, first we start with solar energy. That is responsible for the primary production. Solar energy along with the primary producers, namely the plants, with that we have studied in a photo under the topic of photosynthesis. Mixing the light with uh, carbon dioxide and water during which oxygen is released. You, the plants do the function of what is called as a photosynthesis and during that production is taking place. That is called the primary production. So, what is required for everything ultimately we have got only the solar energy. This primary production is defined as the amount of biomass or organic matter produced per unit area over a time period by plants during the photosynthesis. So, this uh, it is defined as a biomass. This biomass is produced, the amount of biomass produced per unit area, see, one square, one square meter, no, one square meter, over a time period, say for one day, say for in one day, in one square meter, 
How much of uh, biomass, how much amount of biomass is produced, it is expressed in that way. So that is how biomass is expressed. Then, gross primary productivity of an ecosystem is the rate of production of organic matter during the photosynthesis. So, the gross productivity, gross primary productivity is different from the primary production. Okay. This is expressed per unit area over a time, over a period. And this is expressed, this is uh, the gross primary productivity is the total output, it is the rate of the production of the organic matter during the photosynthesis. Net productivity, there is another one more parameter is there, net productivity. What is a net primary productivity? Net primary productivity is the available biomass for the consumers. So the plant may produce uh, a lot of things. But what is available, net primary productivity, what is available for the consumer or for the heterotroph, that is what is called the net primary productivity. Because that alone becomes the consumable thing for a consumer or for a herbivore. So that is the net productivity. The secondary productivity, what is, the, it is defined as the rate of formation of New organic matter by the consumers. The secondary productivity. Primary productivity depends on the plant species inhibiting a particular area. So, the primary productivity is depending on the <coughs> plant species. For example, if algae, if, if, if chlorophyllian members are there, then chlorophyll A and B will be there. They will be producing the uh, starch. A brown algae will be producing a different component and sometimes oil will be produced. So the prepared food material will be differing from one plant species to another plant species. What type of a plant is there in a particular area that will be deciding the primary productivity. It could be uh, dark starch <coughs> and so many prepared compounds are there. And any prepared compound, that prepared compound will be depending on the type of the plant living in that area. It also depend, it also depends on the variety of environmental factors. It depends on environmental factors. Ability of nutrients, then photosynthetic capacity of the plant. So the productivity, the primary productivity is also depending on these three factors. Okay? Therefore, it varies in different type of ecosystems. Then, now we are going to the decomposition. So those which are depending on the producers are called as the consumers. It could be an herbivore or it could be a carnivore. If a, if a plant, if, if, if an animal, a is depending on any plant material. Plant material. It is depending on a plant material. Then this becomes a herbivore. And that the, the herbivore, another animal, is eating this herbivore. Then this becomes a carnivore. And this carnivore will be killed by another animal sometimes. Okay. And then, of course, you have got what is known as the omnivores. Omnivores. Okay. Like that, uh, in different, different terminologies of being coined, uh, even in, uh, in our day to day life. In the olden days, we used to sell, Are you a vegetarian? Yes, sir, I am a vegetarian. Are you a non vegetarian? No, 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 I am a vegetarian. Like that, they used, there were only two words, I am a vegetarian, non vegetarian, like that. Today, you have got a new word that they sometimes they call it as an agarian. First time when I heard the word, I couldn't understand what is an agarian is. What do you mean, sir? I asked. They said, I eat only egg, not other non-vegetarian items. So that, that is the meaning of that word. So they, don't, they don't eat fishes, they don't eat flesh, they don't eat anything. But they eat only egg. Vegetable items plus egg. Vegetarian plus egg. They are called the agarians. Like that, the terms are going on changing. 
And if in the olden days it used to have a herbivore or a carnivore. Nowadays you have got a one is omnivores. The birds are mostly or omnivores. They eat different all the items. They sometimes they eat their nuts, they, they eat the grains of corn. If they eat and most of the time they depend on the worms also, worms and other animals. Okay. So mostly most of the birds they are omnivores. So you can't specifically tell whether a bird is a herbivore or a, a carnivore. Different type of uh, birds, different type of animals we come across. It all depends upon the situation. The same animal when it is a mostly a herbivore, when it is not getting anything, it may, go, it may say change over itself as a carnivore. And similarly when it is not getting any flesh to eat, it may be satisfied with some of the nuts and the fruits. It all depends. Okay. So, in a decomposition, what we are going to uh, learn, it is uh, detrivores, example, earthworm, they break down detritus into small particles. This process is uh, called as a fragmentation. By the process of uh, leaching, water-soluble inorganic nutrients go down into the soil horizon and they get precipitated as unavailable salt or okay, salt over dead and gone. So as a result of this leaching, some of the inorganic materials, they go down and then they settle and normally they are not easily available for the producers. Then the bacterial fungal enzymes degrade and detrit us into simpler inorganic substances. This process is called as a catabolism. This is called as a catabolism. Opposite word is anabolism. Decomposers break down complex organic matter into inorganic substances like carbon dioxide, water and nutrients and the process is called decomposition. Dead plant remains such as the leaves, the bark, the flowers and the dead remains of animals including fetal matter constitute a detritus which is the raw material for their decomposition. Okay. So what is the raw material? The leaves, the warts and flowers from the trees. Then the dead remain of the animals including the fecal matter. They all form they are, they are the basic materials upon which the decomposers are going to act and then decompose it finally. The important steps in the process of a decomposition are fragmentation, leaching, catabolism, unification and mineralization. So these are all the different uh, steps involved in the decomposition. So first they are fragmented, they are then leached. And then they are catabolized, then they are finally changed into the humus, and then the minerals are released into the soil. So, this is how the whole process is taking place. It is important to note that all the above steps in the decomposition operate simultaneously on a detritus. So, it's not that one will be following the other. See, so don't think that. Uh, uh, it will be first fragmented, then it will be leached, then it will be uh, catalyzed. It's not like that. Simultaneously, this uh, decomposition is uh, taking place. That's what it is uh, stated. It is important to note that all the bow steps in the decomposition operate simultaneously on the detritus. Humification and mineralization occur during decomposition in the soil. Humification leads to the accumulation of a dark colored amorphous substance called humus that is highly resistant to microbial action and undergoes a decomposition at an extra slow rate. So the humus formation takes a longer time. It will not be decomposed very quickly by any decomposing material. Microbial action takes a longer time for that. So it takes an extra longer time for the Humus to be formed in the nature. See the beautiful slide showing how the whole thing is operating. So there is a plant here, tree grows on a soil. 
So a tree is growing on your soil. Then what happens? Uh, the green leaves uh, they fall to the ground. Some are eaten by insects and other animals. Nutrients and other energy for growth. Well. So these are all eaten by these worms, animals, human beings. So we are we do it. And then finally it is uh, becoming leaves uh, are partially consumed by decomposers such as fungi and bacteria. They begin to lose form um, and then they become the litter. Finally they become the litter upon which mushrooms are growing. Some nutrients leach into the soil by the chemical action. So some of them are leached by the chemical action and then it reaches the soil. Further decomposition by earthworm, bacteria, soil, mites, fungi, etc. They are responsible for the decomposition. And upon these decomposed humans and um, good soil, which is uh, rich in all the metals and minerals, then the plants are once again growing. So this is how it is a completely forming the cycle. All the plants and the plants in this world, they die and then they get buried, they are getting de decomposed. And then upon that decomposed material, the next new generation plants are growing. So that is how the whole system is operating. Now, we are going to another very important concept, what is called as an energy flow. So, when uh, the energy is uh, flowing from one level to a another level, what is one level? Producer is one level, then consumer may be in two levels or three levels, a consumer of first order, second order, third order like that. So, when energy is moving from one level to another level, there is a dissipation of energy. Except for the deep sea hydrothermal ecosystem, sun is the only source of energy for all ecosystems on earth. On the incident, solar radiation, less than 50% of it, photosynthetically active radiation. So, only 50% of the solar light is photosynthetically active. That point you have to remember very clearly. So of the whole sunlight, photosynthetically active radiation only is a 50 percentage. The green plant in the ecosystem terminally are called producers. It is a terrestrial, in a terrestrial ecosystem, major producers are herbivores or sorry, herbaceous. Major producers are Herbaceous, that is a plants and woody plants. Likewise, primary consumer producers in an aquatic ecosystem will be the phytoplankton, algae and higher plants. Starting from the plants, that is from the producer, food chains or rather webs are formed such that an animal feeds on a plant or an, uh, another animal and in turn is a food for another. The chain or web is formed because of this interdependency. No energy that is uh, trapped into an organism remains forever. So listen this. Starting from the plant, the producers, the food chain or a food web is uh, formed such that an animal feeds on the plant. So, the first consumer. So, the animal feeds on the plant or an another animal. So, now it becomes secondary consumer. And in turn is a food for another. See? That's how a chain is formed. So, one animal may eat the grasses. That animal will be eaten by another. That animal will be eaten by another. A beautiful diagram you have seen. In a paddy field, in a field ecosystem, in a field ecosystem, the paddy is the producer. They are the producers. Now, the rats are, the rats come and eat the, so they are the primary consumers. These rats are killed by the snakes. Snakes. Okay. Now, the, so the snake became a secondary consumer. 
Now these snakes are once again being killed by some eagle, vulture, fox. So these animals, without sort of feeding on the snake, they become the tertiary consumers. So that is how it is going on. No energy that is a trap into an energy in, in, an, in a system remains there forever. It's, it, keeps, it keeps on moving from one level to another level. The energy trapped by the producer is either passed on to the consumer or the organism dies. Death of organism is the beginning of the detritus of the food chain. See, the food material, your plant is there and the plant is producing so many crops, so I mean so, so many fruits and nuts, etc. it is producing. These are fruits and nuts. It is being eaten by the other animals. The plant itself dies and then finally it, it is going to the soil. Then it is, uh, that is the starting point for the, that is the beginning of the detritus. Finally, the whole plant is now reduced to ash. All animals depend on plants directly or indirectly for their food needs. They are hence called as consumers and also HRF traps, opposite term for the autotroph. That which is able to prepare the food is called a autotrophs and these are the heterotrophs. Obviously the primary consumers will be the herbivores. Some common herbivores are the insects, birds and mammals in terrestrial ecosystem and mollusks and uh, Mollusks in aquatic ecosystem. Okay, some of the common herbivores. Herbivores are insects, birds, but some birds are omnivorous. Then mammals. Even in mammals, many of them are uh, I mean uh, carnivorous. So they are the terrestrial ecosystem. And mollusks mostly they depend on the leaves of the plants. So they are the they are herbivores. The detritus food chain <coughs> begins with dead organic matter. It's made up of decomposers which are heterotrophic organisms, mainly fungi and bacteria. They meet their energy and nutrient requirements by degrading dead organic matter or detritus. These are also known as saprophytes or saprotrophs. Decomposers secrete digestive enzymes that break down the dead and waste materials into simple inorganic materials which are subsequently absorbed by them. So this is how the decomposition is taking place. It is taking place with the help of the decomposers, the enzymes are produced by them which are responsible for breaking down the material and then finally converting them into the usable form. In an equos, eco, aquatic ecosystem, the GFC is the major conduit for energy flow. But in a terrestrial ecosystem, a much larger fraction of energy flows through the detritus food chain than through the GFC. Now, detritus food chain may be connected with the grazing food chain at some level. Some of the organisms of the detritus of food chain are prey to the GFC animals and in a natural ecosystem some animals like cockroaches, crows etc are omnivorous. This is what I was telling you. In nature most of them are, they become, they turn out to be omnivores. So you can't call them as a car, herbivores or a carnivores, they become the omnivores. These natural interconnection of a food chains and make it a food web. So there is a, uh, you can't now call it as a food chain. What is a food chain? If one is a depending on another and it, if it is on a chain fashion, uh, this is a depending on this, and this is a depending on this, and this is a depending on this. If it is going to proceed, then it is called a food chain. But it is not like that. It's not like that. So you take the food, 
So you become a herbivore, you become a vegetarian. At the same time, you you eat egg, you become a vegetarian. You eat a flesh also, so you become a, a non-vegetarian, carnivore. So everything is in a mesh. Everything is in the form of a web. So you can't draw only a line. It's not a food chain. So food web is the most appropriate word. See, <coughs> how beautiful. Now, a primary producer, <coughs> And in a first trophic level, it is the plant. Then primary consumer, it is a second trophic level and they are formed by the herbivores. Then the third trophic level is the carnivores and here they are called the secondary consumers. Okay. Now the fourth trophic level is the top carnivore and it becomes a tertiary consumer. So, primary consumer, secondary consumer, tertiary consumer, this is the producer. But in a trophic level, you call this as a first trophic level, second trophic level, third trophic level, and a fourth trophic level. Now, I have given examples for each of this. Now, primary producers are the first trophic level, the phytoplanktons are the grass and the trees are the producers. Then the second trophic level, herbivorous animal uh, um, is zooplanktons, the grasshoppers and the cow. They are purely herbivores. Now, upon them, the animals which are depending are called the fish, birds, wolves, etc. They are in the trophic level, they are in the third position, but they are the secondary consumers. The man and the lion, they occupy the topmost position in the ecosystem, in the, on the consumer level. The important point to note is that the amount of energy decreases on the successive trophic levels. When an organism dies, it is a converted to detritus or a dead biomass that serves as an energy source for decomposers. Organisms at each trophic level depends on those at the lower trophic level for their energy demand. See, you get the sun, solar energy. This is the only energy that we are getting. So some energy is lost in, in the form of the heat. Then you get the plants growing with the help of the sun. So they become the producers. Now depending on these producers, the animals or herbivores are living. And during this course, uh, some of the heat, I mean energy is lost. And depending on these herbivores, the carnivores are living. And during this process, once again, energy is lost. And depending on these carnivores, the top level carnivores are living. And once again, there will be an energy loss. The, during the decomposition also, it is the same thing. Okay. So there is energy loss at every step. Every step there is an energy loss. In the form of a heat or something like that. Now, finally, we are going to the study of what is called as a pyramids. See, beautiful diagram. The pyramid of numbers. Now, uh, we ha I have arranged everything in the form of a... So, that when you have, in a particular area... So, this is a pyramid of a grassland ecosystem. Okay. Now, you go to a, a, a place where you have got one acre of land. One acre of land you take. Just an example. Just an example. One acre of land you take. And in this one acre of land, how many paddy fields will be there? The number of paddy crops will be more. Okay. So that number is just an approximate. It is a uh, five million. Uh, I mean, uh, sorry, eight lakhs or uh, fifty-eight lakhs, fifty-eight lakhs and forty-two thousand, fifty-eight lakhs. Or in terms of millions of five million and uh, eighty-four thousand uh, approximately two thousand. 2,000, 42,000 and 842,000, 842,000. We talk nowadays in terms of only thousands because the words are uh, lakhs, crows and all, nowadays we don't use. So even uh, in US and all they talk everything, what is US already they say, 58,000 and then everything they talk in terms of only thousands only. They don't use the word lakhs. So here it is a uh, eight hundred and forty-two thousand five million eight eight hundred and forty-two thousand. So the number of producers will be always more. 
and here you have got a 708 thousand only 708 thousand see the number of primary consumers is getting completely reduced and then when you go to the secondary consumer level it is still getting reduced and then when you come to this uh, touch level only three or four individuals will be there see compare this value and this value so as you in a traffic level when you move from one to another uh, in terms of a number in terms of a number that's very important in terms of number always uh, it will be showing like that producer will be more primary consumer will be less secondary consumer will be still less and the tertiary consumer will be least it is in that way it is a model then pyramid of a biomass uh, i mean uh, the play i mean um, expressory in terms of biomass you calculate everything in biomass the primary producers of the biomass see, this much biomass is there 809 biomass so as i was telling you how to express it is a kilogram per meter square the dry weight expressed in kilograms per meter square and then see this 809 value is the primary producer but the primary consumer is only 37 kilograms per meter square and the secondary consumer is still low it is 11 and it is a only 1.5 is the mass or the biomass dry weight for every kilogram or every meter square expressed in kilograms okay so in a grassland vegetation once again the biomass also shows mostly just like a pyramid of a number, there won't be much difference between the um, pyramid of number and then the biomass. Both of them are equal. But you see here, it becomes a different. It is an inverted uh, pyramid. It's an inverted pyramid of a biomass. Where it happens, small standing canopy phytoplankton, phytoplanktons supports a large standing crop of a zooplankton. So the phytoplankton amount is very low but the zooplankton the consumers are more consumers are more so it expressed in terms of a biomass sometimes it happens like that the producer will be less and the consumer will be sometimes more so then it becomes an inverted uh, pyramid now you see this is a uh, the pyramid of energy an ideal pyramid of energy see how much of uh, energy you are getting from the sunlight? It is um, 1 million. 1, 1 million. 1 followed by 6 zeros is 1 million. 1 million joules of a sunlight you are getting. But your primary producer is able to utilize only 10,000 joules. That means only 1 percentage. That is only just 1 percentage of. Am I right? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 6 zeros. And here you have got only 4 zeros. It's 1 percentage, correct? 1 percentage. So, this much as the amount of joules of sunlight you are getting, and only this much the plants are able to utilize for their uh, um, in photosynthetic activities. So, the primary producer is able to utilize only 1 percentage of it. And still, see, at the next level, if you go, only once again, the 10 percentage of this one is being used by the primary consumer. And 10 percentage of this one is being used by the secondary consumer. And then when it is coming to the tertiary consumers, it is only still. So 10 percentage of the 10 percentage of the 10 percentage of the 10 percentage of the 100 percentage. You can just imagine. So, if you are getting 1 million joules of uh, energy from the sunlight at a tertiary level, only 10 joules of energy you are getting. So, it is getting there is a loss of energy at every level and then there is a, when you are moving in your trophic level, it always happens. Fine. Nice. Today you are able to, to we were able to understand uh, a lot of uh, things in our uh, discussion. How many types of ecosystems will be there? What are the different types of ecosystem? Terrestrial ecosystem, aquatic ecosystem, 
man made ecosystem and in each category how many types of ecosystems are there i i told you and then as a typical example of an aquatic ecosystem i took the pond as a typical ecosystem in a pond ecosystem what will be the different components living there i showed you the beautiful slide and then how the energy is flowing from one level to the another level and in a pond ecosystem what will be the producers what will be the first order decomposer I mean, of uh, consumer second order consumer third order consumer decomposers what are all will be present in a pond ecosystem we were able to understand it very clearly as i was telling you in the very beginning of my lecture if you understand the basic concept of your particular ecosystem then you have to apply this knowledge this will be operating in the same way in a grassland ecosystem or a paddy ecosystem or a forest ecosystem or whatever the type of the ecosystem is as i was telling you the fundamental rule is same only the components will be keeping on changing from one to another okay that's good you were able to get a good idea for what a ecosystem today it was my lecture i mean um, it, it it was understandable to you if if it was understandable to you fine good i will be the most happiest person in the world thank you very much for listening to me we will discuss our i mean we will continue our discussions in the further lectures that i am going to give you anyway thank you